Give us up to How you. did you know? You, haven't you, you've only just worked that out. Before I uh, invite the Minister to move the motion, I would like to briefly address some administrative matters in connection with this morning's proceedings and also to acknowledge some guests in my gallery. I wish to advise the House that in accordance with the broadcasting resolution of this House most recently adopted on the 28th of June 2007, I have approved footage of proceedings of the House being made available on the Parliament's new YouTube website. Proceedings in the Legislative Assembly will be available in the same manner. This is in addition to the normal live webcast of these events. The footage of proceedings from the House on the YouTube site will be divided into segments according to speaker. I can also advise members that a page will be established on the Parliament's website which will include links to the, re to the relevant transcripts from the Hansard and the minutes of proceedings. This page will be accessible through the What's New section of the Parliament's homepage. At the conclusion of the debate and after the question is put, I will be leaving the chair until the ringing of a long bell at 12 noon. Members and visitors are invited to attend a morning tea in the Stranger's Dining Room between 11am and 12 noon. Members of the public are also invited to sign the Apology Book, which will be located near the entrance to the Stranger's Dining Room. This book will be here in Parliament House for signing until Friday the 19th of October 2012. After this time, the book will be kept at the New South Wales State Library. The Legislative Council Standing Committee on Social Issues has undertaken two pivotal inquiries concerning adoption. In October 1989, under the chairmanship of the Honourable Max Willis, the Social Issues Committee tabled its report on accessing adoption information. The committee examined the procedures and restrictions relating to accessing adoption information in New South Wales. The inquiry stemmed from concerns within the adoption community that the adoption of Children Act 1965 imposed unnecessary restrictions on access to identifying adoption information. The committee unanimously recommended that adoptees over the age of 18 years be allowed to access their original birth certificate and that birth parents should be able to access their child's amended birth certificate upon the adoptee reaching adulthood. Two years later, these recommendations were given force in the Adoption Information Act 1990, which was passed by the New South Wales Parliament in 1991 with the support of all political parties. Nine years later, in June 1998, uh, the Social Issues Committee, uh, chaired by the Honourable Anne Simons, received a reference to examine past adoption practices from 1950 to 1998 and in particular the professional practices in the delivery of adoption services, whether any of these practices were unethical or unlawful, and if so, what measures would assist people experiencing distress as a consequence of these practices. The committee, under the chairmanship of the Honourable Jan Burnswood, MLC, tabled its final report entitled Releasing the Past in November 2000. The report makes a significant contribution to our understanding of adoption practices during this period and, most importantly, the experience of individuals affected by these practices. Two of the 20 rec uh, recommendations in the report are of particular relevance today. Recommendations 16 and 17 called for an acknowledgement that past adoption practices were misguided and the issuing of an apology to the mothers, fathers, adoptees and their families who have suffered as a result of past adoption practices. I welcome into my gallery the former chair of the Social Issues Committee, uh, Ms Anne Simons. I also extend the best wishes of the Honourable Max Willis and Ms Jans Burns-Woods who could not be with, it here, with us here today. I'm particularly pleased that two of the Secretariat staff who worked on the inquiry and prepared the reports are in my gallery this morning, Dr Jenny Knight and Ms Julie Langsworth. And finally, I welcome everyone joining us today for this significant occasion who are seated in the public gallery. I now invite the Minister to move the motion and give his speech, which is, I understand, in his identical terms to that being delivered by the Premier in the Legislative Assembly.
the Leader of the Government. Mr President, I move that this House acknowledges the traumatic effects of the forced adoption practices of the past that have echoed through the lives of tens of thousands of mothers, fathers, people adopted as children and their families. And all members of this House, with profound sadness and remorse, say to those living with the ongoing grief and pain of forced adoption practices that we are sorry. The trauma induced by forced adoption practices in the past has reverberated through the lives of tens of thousands of mothers and their children who were removed. It has affected fathers who were never given a say, as well as the families who never knew the truth of what went on with the brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews and grandchildren that they lost. It caused years of pain and grief for many, instead of the joy and delight which parenthood might reasonably have been expected to bring. Today, in this, Australia's first parliament, we acknowledge the terrible wrongs that were done and, with profound sadness and remorse, say to those living with ongoing grief and pain, we are sorry. We have come to know about this shameful episode of our history because of the courage, commitment and strength of many individuals, mothers, fathers and people adopted as children who refused to stay silent about the injustice they suffered. Their mistreatment was first publicly acknowledged by this parliament in the December 2000 report releasing the past of an inquiry into past adoption practices. During its inquiry, the Legislative Council Standing Committee on Social Issues received more than 300 written submissions and heard testimony from mothers, fathers and those who were taken for adoption. Committee members heard distressing accounts of actions taken to secure or not secure a mother's consent to the adoption of her child. They heard of women routinely denied access to their babies in the hours and days after the birth. This year's Senate Committee's report on former forced adoption policies and practices also recorded evidence of events last century that led to the babies of many young single women being taken for adoption. The Senate Committee concluded it was incontrovertible that forced adoption was commonplace. It's hard to fathom how these practices were allowed to occur when today, in the 21st century, we celebrate motherhood in, and family in all its forms. In communities everywhere, the image of the expectant mother is one of great joy and hope for the future. But mid last century, society didn't look kindly on the young, single, pregnant woman. Rather, these young women usually faced the disappointment of their parents and the disapproval of the community. They were made to feel ashamed.